It seems to be a failure at the head of the class. Tonight, an investigation by the News 4i team reveals nearly 1,000 teachers in D.C. classrooms are not licensed. And that's raising some serious questions about training and the ability to track if something goes wrong. Here's investigative reporter Scott McFarland. What happened late in the morning in a hallway of Cleveland Elementary School in Northwest D.C. cost Lacey Thornton her job. One of Thornton's fourth grade students was disrupting math class. When Thornton and the girl went outside in the hall, surveillance footage obtained by the News 4i team shows the teacher strike the girl in the head. A jury convicted Thornton of assault last week. Her attorney declined our request for an interview. When we checked to see if Lacey Thornton's teaching license had been revoked, we found something we didn't expect to find. Thornton never had a teaching license in the first place. And we found when it comes to D.C. public schools, she's far from the only one. Every parent wants a highly qualified teacher in the classroom. D.C. parent and State Board of Education member Joe Whedon says every D.C. teacher should be licensed to ensure proper training. And if that teacher's license is revoked for misconduct, to flag other school districts. Through a national database called NASDAQ, which alerts every state in the nation about the nearly 80,000 licensed teachers in the U.S. who've been stripped of their licenses. An unlicensed teacher could be able to avoid detection. Is there a safety risk for the kids? Absolutely. Um, and it may not be to the students here in D.C., but it would be students in other jurisdictions. In as, Maryland, in Virginia. Maryland, in Virginia, or elsewhere. Using the Freedom of Information Act, we asked D.C. public schools for a list of all of its teachers, nearly 4,000 of them. And we compared those to the list of every licensed teacher in the district from D.C.'s Office of State Superintendent of Education. And the I-team found nearly one of every four teachers is unlicensed, about 1,000 of them. DCPS is not in compliance with what it is required to do, which is ensure that all teachers have licensure when they enter the classroom. So they are breaking D.C. rules? Yes. D.C. Deputy Mayor for Education Anna Smith says the school district conducts background checks on all newly hired teachers. And starting next year, the school district says it will require all newly hired teachers to at least apply for licenses before starting work. D.C. Public Schools uh, sets uh, a rigorous uh, interview process uh, as they hire teachers and school leaders across the system. We found in nearby school districts, 100 percent of teachers have licenses. In Prince George's County, teachers are not allowed to teach without one. Why don't we have this? Gaston de los Reyes has two sons at Oyster Adams School. Licensure requirements exist for a reason, and uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense that the system in D.C. hasn't embraced and built upon the knowledge that goes into a good uh, credentialing system. So who are the unlicensed teachers? Hundreds of them were first year teachers in 2017, 2018, according to records obtained by the I team. But others were teachers with years of experience and some are high profile. Of the 19 teachers on the D.C. Public Schools Chancellor's Teachers Cabinet, which advises and regularly meets with top brass, four are unlicensed. Licensing is the safety net. Licensing is absolutely the safety net. As for Lacey Thornton, after her arrest for assaulting a student, she found a new teaching job at a private school in Prince George's County as she awaited trial, a private school that did not require a license. D.C. school officials say their hiring process ensures high-quality teachers, even if those teachers are unlicensed, through the use of background checks and multiple interviews. His text messages to a student were serious enough to have his teaching license suspended in another state. So how did a music teacher later end up working for two local school districts? Tonight, an investigation by Scott McFarlane and our I-team reveals critical steps were missed by the state of Maryland and the school districts. It raises the question how many other troubled teachers have slipped through the cracks. On the first day of school, August 2016, at Eastern Middle School in Silver Spring, the kids weren't the only ones adjusting. I think the first couple weeks I was, no, it was nerve wracking. The new music teacher had a secret. He never should have been hired. What I did really wasn't criminal at all. It was an ethical mistake. We're not showing Eric Greco's face because he was never investigated by police or social services and fears retaliation for blowing the whistle on the loopholes he admits to exploit. In 2014, he lost his job as music teacher at St. Augustine High in Florida for sending inappropriate text messages, some sexual, to a student. Can you understand why maybe some parents would be concerned? Absolutely. To see what you 
typed. Yeah. Peter Silva's kids took Greco's class at St. Augustine and knew the student involved. I feel that he, uh, he abused his position and that trust. The Florida Department of Education was concerned too and began the process of suspending Greco's teaching license, making him ineligible to teach in public schools there and any other U.S. state including Maryland, where he began his career and still had an active Maryland license. But before Florida finished the process, he found a new job teaching music at Patuxent High in Calvert County. Then January 22, 2016 came, the day Florida finally officially suspended his license. It should have been spotted by Maryland state education officials within days. Yet no one came to Patuxent High to remove him. Greco managed to hang on at Patuxent till the end of the school year when he says he was let go for issues of performance, but his Maryland teaching license was somehow still intact. After summer break, he applied for and got another job at Eastern Middle School in Montgomery County. Were you surprised that no one checked? Actually, yes I am. And he taught at Eastern Middle nearly a full semester until November 2016 when the Maryland State Department of Education, 10 months later, finally began proceedings to revoke his license. Eastern Middle School removed him immediately, says Montgomery County School spokesman Derek Turner. Did Maryland not alert you the license was revoked when you hired this man? We didn't find out until early November that his license was revoked. And, and it's concerning because this was something that we, we understand was available earlier in the year. To Maryland state officials? To Maryland state officials. It was a surprise to the administrators in Calvert County, too, their superintendent says. How is it possible a teacher whose license was revoked in a different state managed to work at your school district for months. We really can't say. We rely on the State Department of Education for that process. The Maryland State Department of Education licenses every public school teacher in the state and also conducts a monthly check of a national database called NASDAQ, which alerts any time a teacher's license is revoked elsewhere in the nation, including for sexual misconduct. But that didn't happen with Eric Greco. The News 4i team found the Maryland State Department of Education for eight months in 2016 wasn't using or searching that national license database, wasn't checking the names of teachers at licenses for possible sexual misconduct in other states, and wasn't sending up the names of Maryland's troubled teachers to alert the rest of the nation. We asked multiple times for an on-camera interview, but the State Department of Education declined, issuing a written statement saying it stopped using the database in 2016 because of concerns about its own data security. The agency said it's not required by law to conduct the checks, and that the hiring of local educators is the responsibility of each local school system. Several local Maryland school districts told the I-Team they were not informed the State Department of Ed pulled itself offline until the I-Team told them. The information was there, people chose not to look for it. Child safety advocate and Montgomery County parent Jennifer Alvaro says this is why school district background checks are so important. Both school districts acknowledge to the I-team they don't call every prior employer when someone applies. We're thinking about a thousand employees over a very short period of time. We need to make sure we're balancing the, the burden. Greco admits to the I-team omitting information about the Florida job from his Montgomery County application. And it was out of desperation to find a position. He says he hopes by coming forward, the State Department of Education and the school districts tighten up their systems. If it helps get rid of people that shouldn't be within 100 yards of children, then in some way it's worth it. Hours before our broadcast here tonight, Montgomery County Public Schools sent this letter to parents saying the teacher in question never returned to Eastern Middle School. The News 4 I team uncovers a string of teachers removed from local classrooms. That's right, stripped of their licenses for misconduct with students in these cases. But nearly every one of these cases has remained secret, unknown to parents. And tonight, Scott McFarland and the I team show why some child safety advocates worry that that's because there's a dangerous double standard at play. Good evening. A local music teacher and choir director is facing child sex charges tonight. Sadly, it's become almost weekly news. She's accused of sending inappropriate pictures to children. Local teachers busted for inappropriate or abusive relationships with students. But that's not the whole story. The News 4 I team is going to show you why there are many more cases that never make it to the airwaves. Until now. Is it almost always men? No, about 30% of the incidents are female teachers or female staff members. Virginia Commonwealth University professor Cheryl Shakeshaft has led studies on teacher sex misconduct cases and says there is somewhat of a double standard when the victim is male. People are more likely to think that a male who sexually abuses a female student is 
that, that, that that's more harmful than a female who sexually abuses a male student. When the I team investigated the 20 most recent local teachers whose licenses were canceled or revoked for sex misconduct, we found six involved female teachers with underage students. Do you think it's okay when it's a teenage guy? No, I, I don't think it's right um, either way. Alex Cornbrooks attended Lee High School in Fairfax County when the school district said his former math teacher admitted sending racy pictures of herself in a thong and inappropriate emails to another boy in March 2017. You'd hear things about uh, mostly past students, people who had already graduated that had some sort of relationship with her. The school district's report says it investigated, confirmed the pictures, and started revocation of her license. There were a lot of rumors going around at my school during that time that this has happened. The teacher resigned and relinquished her license, but other students and parents never heard about it. Authorities said they didn't have enough evidence to file criminal charges. Would your parents like to have seen this? I believe they would have really appreciated seeing that. Same story this summer when a Stafford High teacher was accused of sending naked photos of herself to a male student. According to police records reviewed by the News 4i team, the case hit a brick wall. The student not agreeing to help the detective. Still, the teacher resigned and canceled her license. Are teen boys less likely to notify somebody about this? Yes, they are for two reasons. One, um, they, they, they're questioning themselves. They say, well, gee, this really upsets me, but, you know, I'm supposed to be happy about it. And so they're afraid of ridicule. And then they're afraid that they'll get in trouble. These cases reveal something else, too. Even if a school district has enough evidence to revoke a teacher's license for misconduct, you might not hear about it, even if you have a child in that school. The I-Team surveyed every local school district, and each said it would not notify parents about a teacher losing a license unless police made a criminal arrest. Virginia school districts say their state law prohibits doing so without the teacher's permission. A Loudoun County teacher under arrest tonight accused of having a relationship with a student. Like this month's case involving Loudoun County teacher Kimberly Winters, criminally charged with having a sexual relationship with a juvenile and expected in court in January. But we found at least six other recent cases with a female teacher accused of sex misconduct that remained a secret. And seven of the 14 most recent cases involving male teachers were never publicly reported by schools. And the I-Team also found sometimes the truth doesn't come out for years. Well, the stereotype is that every boy wants to have sex when, when he's a, a teenager, and getting to have sex with a teacher or a staff member is, is like a bonus for the boy. Last year, Fairfax County Police investigated a case against a former Edison High School teacher who admitted having sex with a student 10 years ago. That student, now in his mid-20s, revealed the relationship with his teacher, Amy Zelaya, while taking a polygraph for a job in Texas, according to a Texas police report. The report says Elia admitted to having sex on school property with the then 15-year-old. But the former student refused to help local police pursue charges because, it turns out, he's now married to Zelaya. Amy Zelaya gave up her Virginia teaching license after the state started to revoke it. The I-team spent months trying to reach her and her husband for comment, calls, emails, even a handwritten letter. We did not hear back. She has since sought and been issued a teaching license in Missouri, we've learned. As for the case of Kimberly Winters, who is charged criminally, her attorney says she is not guilty and plans to plead not guilty in her upcoming court appearance. Leon and Doreen, she'll be in court in January.